Hello everyone, the A380 has been released for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a big thing for us. Four years in development and it's finally out for the Flight Sim 2020. You may be thinking, how do I fly this thing? Well, that's what this series will be about. This is a series where I'll go through how you can fly this plane from A to B. It's not going to be super in-depth. These will just be basics to get you from A to B. So you can just fly the plane, which I'm sure is what you want to do. Well, welcome to the cockpit. This is the A380. You will receive it in this state, you know. Realistically, you probably wouldn't. You'd probably be powered up to an extent because it would be in a turnaround state. So here is your flight tablet. Just click on it once and it will power up. You don't need any power to the aircraft to power the tablet up. You're going to want to import your SIM brief username and your Navigraph if you own Navigraph subscription into the tablet. And then import SIM brief data and this will import your flight plan. So overhead panel and uh, ensuring external power is connected if possible. If not then you'd fire up the APU at this point. So external power, there is four. The switches are here, here, here and here. And that will give you life to the aircraft lights will turn on next thing to do is to turn the batteries on to support the external power and those are located just above the uh, left side and that's this one this one this one and this one all four need to be turned on now that is power supplied to the aircraft next thing you could do is your lights but these are of course more of a uh, company thing and these will not affect your flying ability Emergency exit lights would come on at this point, you'd put your mobile lights on, uh, you'd put your crew supply on and you would put your ground control on except that is on automatic. And you put your entertainment on apart from those are on automatic as well, even though they don't say they are. Um, and yeah, uh, you could at this point also put the fuel pumps on, but I'm not going to. Some airlines do, some airlines don't, it depends. You, you turn them on before the engines either way. So that is the overhead panel setup for now. And uh, as you see, life to the aircraft. We have lights and things show. Next thing to do would be to turn our IRSs on, which I should have done before. IRSs are up here. Nav, nav, nav. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. Realistically, you would go left, right to middle or center. But you don't have to do that. Either way, it'll work. So next thing we would be doing is uh, loading the aircraft. Uh, I'm going to use GSX, and to ensure that GSX links with the aircraft, head over to settings again, and uh, head over to third-party options, and then make sure that GSX fueling and GSX payload synchronizations are switched to on, so that the blue toggle is showing. All right, boarding is now starting. So, next thing we would do, head over to the FMS, or the McDo. Now, you will notice something between the A320 and the A380. It's a lot bigger, and it's more of a tablet than anything. But, same principles apply, don't worry, I'll talk you through it anyway. But trust me, it's not as scary as it looks. Active at the top left corner, click on that, then click on Flight Plan. Then click at the bottom left, in it, and then this is the page we want. This is where you'd put your primary flight plan in, like you would in the A320, from the init page. Now, you can do a SIM brief request, or you can manually insert it in, but for simple purposes, I'm going to use SIM brief and import it in that way. So what you'd do is go to Company Flight Plan Request, click on it, and it will say uplink insert in progress down at the bottom uh, corner of the screen You've just got to wait at this point for your flight plan to be inserted into the plane so receive company flight plan insert and that is our flight plan inserted into the aircraft as you can see we are Lufthansa 57 Tango Yankee Echo Golf Charlie Charlie to Echo Delta Delta Kilo and an alternate of Echo Delta Delta Foxtrot, which is Frankfurt. Our cruising flight level is flight level 410, or in other words, 41,000 feet. 
our cruising temperature at 41,000 feet is minus 56 degrees and our cost index is 173 and uh, our maximum altitude possible will be 43,031 feet which we're not going to reach because I'm going to say 41,000 feet you could put your trip wind in now but for simple purposes I'm not going to as it's not needed so the next thing that we would go ahead and do is we check the flight plan over so just like in the 8020 you've got these buttons click on the flight plan button and here you go we can see that we've got echo golf charge charlie and then discontinuity now why is this because we haven't put our standard instrument departure in, or our sid but all of the waypoints are in so that means it's obviously worked so we have a discontinuity how do we put our sid in multiple ways you could do this but most simple way click on echo golf charlie charlie click on departure and here you go this is where you put your sin so our departure runway for Manchester is going to be 23 left and uh, our standard instrument departure is the Lister to Yankee Lister to Yankee and we do not have a transition for this uh, and uh, to insert this into your flight plan you would rather A click on that button there or B you click on the flight plan button down here and then you click insert temporary at the uh, right hand side of the screen and see it's all in yellow this means that it's all temporary it will not unless you click erase if you click erase it can erase everything done but if you want to do it you can insert it so it's correct to me so I'm going to insert it and that is our standard instrument departure inserted into the aircraft so at this point you could check the flight plan to make sure there's no discontinuities by clicking on this arrow button going down the flight plan or up the flight plan by clicking that one now you will find that we have a discontinuity here before the arrival airport this is normal because we don't have our standard arrival route inputted into there that's our flight plan done for this stage of the flight head back to the init page and we can check our IRS, IRS alignment by heading over back to the init page and uh, you can click on the but IRS button here and then IRS 1, 2 and 3 align that means they're all in align mode if they weren't saying that then they aren't working so you must reset the IRS's by putting them back to the nav mode or putting them into the nav mode if you had forgotten to do that or misclicked and you see it's available in two minutes so it's aligning correctly so we're basically uh, done for the moment in the FMS so next thing we could do is uh, set the Q&H uh, to do this you could just press B on the keyboard or you could alternatively just find the Q&H as a real pilot would which is what most people do because it's more realistic to find the Q&H head over to the EFB air pressure and that's the number you want so in our case it's 1026 hectopascals so change to hectopascals by pressing the little black round knob and then we set it to 1026 by scrolling up so it's at 1026 and it does change both of them if you press one of them so yeah you only have to do one and it'll set both all right so that's the Q&H set so at this point we're really just waiting on the passengers to board so what you could do is check the progress of that by heading to the EFB and heading to ground clicking on payload if it's not already on payload at the top right and then you can see other passengers loading and as you can see they are loading because we've got 198 passengers on board already and we've got 306 um, due to board that they've already fueled us of course you've got the cockpit cabin lights lights down here which brighten the screens these screens got lights over here which brighten these screens at this point you could be checking over your charts seeing what your SID's going to be like what you're going to have to comply to any restrictions you may have in our case we have a 5,000 feet restriction at Listo so that will be our initial altitude providing ATC doesn't give us a, a different altitude 
Another thing we could do is head on over to the FMS, click on surveillance right here, and then uh, set your transponder. Of course, we're at standby mode right now. We could keep it on standby until we are ready for pushback, but I'm going to set it now. Uh, so we have uh, we're going to click auto, and then we're going to select the mode we want. In my case, I want TA only, because we don't want standby, as that would be no different. And we'd of course put our squat code in. You could type this in. So say we want 1000. 1000. Enter. I don't. There you go. I'm going to have a squawk of 1000. You can use your keyboard. Or you can also use these buttons here. To input numbers in. Or letters in. It does give you the option in this plane. So you choose what you want to do. You know, you, you, might, you might want to have a mess around with the tablet um, and things. You might have, want to have a mess around with these screens. Maybe setting them up as you like. See, the thing to note is on the A380, you've got an extra setting when you're zooming into the map on the PFD. Um, you can zoom out as you would normally would, but you, you can also um, head over to this zoom option. And essentially, what that's going to do is you can view the airport and uh, you can actually zoom in and out as well um, and you can view the airport what gate you're at and things which is very useful and you can also click on it and it moves on the tablet which is awesome it's a useful bit of information for you if you're wondering where you are on a taxiway you don't have to use an avigraph anymore a380 does it for you on pfd screen we could check over our flight plan thoroughly by going over to the plan option but of course, you'd have to go back to the, um, of course, the uh, the uh, standard zoom settings. I'm going to click on 10, and I'm going to check the flight plan over. So you're going to select this button over from arc to plan, and then we're going to head over to here, and we're just going to go through the flight plan by using this little arrow. And that will go through each waypoint individually, checking everything is all fine on the PFD screen. Because it might be fine on the FMS, but that doesn't mean it's all good. So you do have to double check it on the PFD, what's advisable. And as you see there, we're all good up to our star, and that's what I'm expecting. So back to the arc, and then we're going to go back to the zoom. We're going to zoom right into the airport. And have we finished boarding? It looks like we have. We have finished boarding. So we've finished boarding now. Uh, so now is the time to get the APU fired up. APU fired up. So to do that, we'd head over to the overhead panel, of course. If you master switch, wait three seconds, one, two, three, click on the APU start button, much similarly like to the A320, it's no different here. I'm going to wait for the APU to fire up at this point, and uh, at this point I'm going to go back to the FMS. We're going to head over to the init page again, we're going to go ahead of fuel and load here. And we're going to input our zero fuel in our fuel and that because we have indeed loaded the aircraft fully. So in terms of zero fuel right, zero fuel weight in the payload section, we have 325,711 kilograms of fuel weight. Well, our zero fuel weight in real terms would be 325.7. So we're going to insert 325.7 into there, 325.7, enter, and that's our zero fuel weight. And our zero fuel weight CG will be here, and we had 36.41, so a bit. So 36.4, we'll uh, round that down to 36.4, of course, 36.4, enter. And that's that done. Now next thing is fuel, which is block. It's not exactly clear that that means fuel, but, you know. So we're going to go to the fuel tab on the EFB. I'm going to see how much fuel do we have. 28 tons of fuel by the looks of it. Uh, put 28 tons in there. And enter. 28. There we go. And everything else should calculate automatically. All right. So now we've got our fuel and our weights inputted into the FMS. We are going to make sure the APU has started, and it has. 
So we're going to put the seatbelt signs on at this point and we're going to put the APU bleed on. And at this point you can turn the external power off because we are now powered by APU power. So at this point I'm going to go ahead to GSX and uh, say that we are ready for pushback and departure. At this point I'm going to turn on all of the fuel pumps on. So fuel pumps are up here. Uh, we've got a lot of them. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to put our centre tanks on. One, two. That are all the fuel pumps. All right. So as we're preparing for pushback and departure, we can put our beacon lights on now. Like this. We're going to get our um, our performance page done for the takeoff. So you you are going to have to get a uh, takeoff calculator, takeoff performance calculator from elsewhere. But Simbrief actually does have one for us. Our our V1 speed today is going to be 133, 138 for the rotation, and 148 for the V2. Those are our numbers there. We're going to use a flex takeoff today with a temperature of 66 degrees. You could go ahead and do the climb and cruise numbers, but this is only if you want to uh, limit climb rates and things. Is our performance page set up for the departure? Brakes released. So our pushback is now initiated. At this point, we can start our engines up. So, engine start selector switch is actually up here on the overhead panel. One click to the right and IGN start. At this point, we can start the engines. Here are the engines. Engine 1 and 2 can be started at the same time. So, down here, engine master switches 1 and 2 to on, and those will start those engines. Ensure your APU bleed is on at this point, as the engines won't start if APU bleed is not on. So, if your engines aren't starting for some reason, Ensure the APU bleed is on, as that is the first port of call. So there you see, our engines are starting. So once the engines have uh, said that they are available, you can then go ahead and start up um, the engine 3 and 4. Engine 3 and engine 4. And those will of course start up, the bleed air will go into it, and then the engines will eventually start. So keep monitoring this panel to ensure the engine is starting, and uh, yeah. So while there is two Q&H switches, there is another one down here which is commonly forgotten about. You're going to have to set this one as well, this one. To do that you just of course get the knob, then select it to the Q&H you want. In our case 1026. That's it. Don't forget that one, it's commonly missed, try not to forget it. Alright, so pushback is complete, the tug is gone. Now we are on the taxiways with the engine started. So at this point you can take the APU bleed off, APU mass switch can come off and that is the APU off. Engines are supplying full power to the aircraft at this point. So now we can uh, get our wing lights on, get our nose lights to taxi and we can get going. So we need to make sure that we have everything set up for the taxi now. So we would need our flaps set to the setting required, in our case that was flaps 1. You will know because you hear this noise. It's such a good noise. So that's flaps set, checked, spoilers armed, push them up, spoilers are armed. Transponder set to TARA, surveillance, TARA. Transponder is set. Trim needs to be 38%. So this is your trim, which you need. This is the trim that you're at. So we are not at the correct trim. Now to change your trim, it is this button here. Up and down, the arrow will tell you which way you're going. So we'll zoom out a bit. Trim there. So we need to get up to 38%. So we need to go down. So we're going to put it down. 38% just hold it down and it will go down and leave it till you're at the correct trim so 38% 38% is set trim is set see here take config here auto brakes needs to be on reduced takeoff 
projected takeoff armed the blue button will show and the uh, will go to green so before taxi checklist is complete all right so next thing to check is everything is set up correctly auto brakes are an RTO that's shown by here and it also be blue here and it'll also be in green here flaps should be in the takeoff mode check that by make sure the flaps are set flaps one is set and you see that's the correct setting because it says here flaps one ground spoilers armed pushed up they are armed checked seatbelt signs are on they are on and it's green there all right we're going to set our altitude to 5000 because that's our initial altitude i'm going to get constraints on to the um, screen all right so i think that does it for this video that was the um, cold and dark to taxi tutorial if you have enjoyed it do let me know and uh, yeah i hope it has been useful any questions as i say just leave them in the comments below and uh, i will i wish you all pleasant flights in the a380 and i shall see you all in the next video bye guys